So what you're seeing right now is not a holding slide. That is the actual login screen for the application. And hopefully you can see that it's like no other login screen you've seen, and that's a, a bar we've set across the entire bit of software. Alloy's been built specifically for the web, and it's built for all modern browsers, and it means that there's no plugins or anything required. The software itself has these video backdrops that are catered towards the specific types of assets that you might be managing. So it will learn the types of things that you're managing according to the software, and then the videos would adjust to the background. So I'm just going to log in here. And the first thing you see is uh, a beautiful map in the center. Uh, and we'll come back to this again. On your left-hand side, you can see the dashboard. Now, the dashboard is made up of a number of cards. And essentially, each card is for a specific module. Those cards are essentially there to be able to give you key bits of information. Now, Asset management is becoming more and more about performance management. We've all got our targets, we've got our KPIs, and we all need to be able to report them on these instantaneously. So in a connected world, what we need to be able to do is report on those KPIs against real live data that's happening. And that's what these cards do. Now, if I switch over to the right-hand side, you can see we've got a menu panel here. First up, we've got base maps. Now, base maps provide that backdrop to your data. There are times when the data does all the talking, and you don't really need anything interesting in the background. There's other times where you want to be able to change that to provide some context. We often get asked about adding ordnance survey type backdrops to the data so that you can find the context of your data. So we've added, obviously, the light, the dark, my personal favorite. Uh, but if we go down here to ordnance survey, and zoom in, you can see that you can get all that richness of detail directly in the map. Now, base maps are great because, yes, they provide this context. But there's always a specific base map you might want for a specific bit of data. We could, of course, try to just keep adding different types of base maps uh, for uh, every possible data set that we can think of. But a better way to do this is just to allow you to be able to add the ones that are most interesting for your organization. So we've made this super easy here. So we've got a organization here that publishes WMS services. They've actually got some really beautiful maps, like these watercolor style things. Um, and, and what the hell, let's try and have a use of that one. So I'm going to grab this, which is their, their WMS service. And I'll just copy that link. I'll then add a new base map, give it a name paste in the link, hit done, and that map is added. I can now view a stylized map of the UK that quickly. Yeah. So next up, we've got networks. Now, networks, as you'll all know, for asset management are a really critical part of doing good asset management. Right? For the, if you're doing a specific asset, you need the right network. So for our street works people, it will be a gazetteer. For our pavement people, it will be a PMS network. For others, internationally, they may be polygons, they may be lines, safety barriers, drainage. All of these will have a different network system. If we want to do this thing about connecting these assets together and doing holistic asset management, the whole fence-to-fence -fence, uh, idea that we've all dreamed about, then what we have to be able to do is, one, support all of these different networks within a single application. And secondly, we have to be able to move interchangeably from one network to the other. So Allo provides all of that capability, everything from the NSG to just your standard polygon. So if we've got here, we're showing the NSG network. And we'll give a bit more detail here. You can also just click on um, and create a polygon network. And this is something I just drew within Google Maps, loaded it into the application. And I can now use that as a network. So here we've got layers. And we've made this beautifully clean so that you can see all the layers, because this is where all your data comes together. right? You've got maybe some street lights in there. You've got jobs out there. Maybe you have your structures. Whatever it may be, you want to make sure that this part of the interface is because it's going to be used so often, is as clean and simple as possible. And that's what we've tried to do. 
If you do want more details about any one of these assets, all you have to do in terms of the layers is click on there. You get an immediate breakdown in terms of the types of styles and things that are used in order to represent it. Zoom in. And we Let's open up um, some street lights in here. So you can see the street lights are shown as lines in terms of representing the, the sections where we may have street lights. As we zoom in, we start to get more and more detail and these clusters pop up. The clusters, as you zoom in, you get more and more detail about them. We've now got five street lights. They pop out into individual ones and we can start to interact with them. You immediately get a breakdown of like the top level information. If you've got any images, those can also be displayed in that information panel. Uh, as you scroll down, we've got some risk output from, for street lighting, they do what's called a TR22 analysis and identify the street lights that are um, at risk. And you can take that risk measure and actually turn it into an infographic. You can take data that's being loaded in and represent it as a chart or as an image. And this is a really powerful way of you being able to deliver and not be limited simply by the interface itself. If there's a specific widget that you want to have in there to be able to display your data, then we're able to provide that. You have to be able to represent the separate components that make up a specific asset and deal with each one of those independently. So what we've provided is an additional view and that takes you off of the map. Simply by clicking on the icon for the structure, it pulls up the structure itself and then you can navigate. So here we've got the structural information. We can get information about the controller, a bracket, a lantern, what type of uh, lamp is in there. And these structures are unique to that specific asset. If instead I say I pick up Belisha Beacons and I, I click on that and, and get that breakdown, that may have a much more complex structure. Now imagine this structure for a bridge. Imagine this structure for a drainage asset. You've now got the capability of being able to manage all of the separate components, each one with its own life cycle, its own replacement strategy, all of those things in a single application. And, if you and don't worry, we haven't left the pavement guys out either. If you click on a road surface, you've got that same structural idea here. The way we find information today is very different from the way that I think when you pick up an application to do with asset management and start looking for stuff, now trying to search all of that information instantly is incredibly hard, but we've done it. So let's take a look at how that works. So the search capability here, let's type in say the name of um, a specific asset, and I know that I've got one somewhere in there called ZX01, then I can get some information immediately about it, and that takes a few seconds. And then I can click on it, find the street lights that have that reference, and jump directly to it. If instead I want to say find a specific street, and let's say it's called High Street, then I can just type in that name, and almost as soon as I finish typing the name, it's found the location, it's found jobs that are on that street, it's found NSG references, all of that stuff is done absolutely instantaneously. I mean, this is amazing. This really changes the way that people are gonna start looking for and identifying their assets and being able to manage them, because you can do it so quickly. Right. Voice is the way that people are interacting with their devices now. Uh, okay, Alloy. Show me street lights. So, so we, can, we can do search requests as well. Okay, Alloy. Search for High Street. Like, so um, it lists, or you wanted to turn on a specific layer, you can do that too. So if I turn off the street light layer, and I'll leave this open so you can see what happens. Okay, Alloy. Show me jobs. And it will turn on the jobs layer for you. And we call it Nightscape. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna switch on um, the street lights layer, and we've got a special visualization in here called Nightscape. I turn that on, and immediately you see a night-based image for all of the street lights. When I click on this and kind of pull it along, you'll see the fact that you can tell when sunset happens and nighttime starts, and you can see when sunrise occurs. When I let go of it at a specific time, you can see at what, what, the, what the, the actual pattern, the profile of that lamp is doing at that specific point in time. So this is cool from like this far out, right? We can see immediately 
um, all of these things. All of these, so we've got over 100,000 streetlights right now, and they're all being drawn in the browser at, almost as, as soon as I've clicked it. Let's kind of zoom into a specific area and get some more detail. You start to get a little bit more of an idea about where all of the streetlights are and the different types. The white kind of lines and dots representing the LED lights on, on the street. As I zoom in further, you can get closer information. And then finally, I get into here. And now you start seeing a rendering of, of all of these streetlights. And, and what we're representing here is how, uh, what mount, mounting height is the, the lamp uh, placed at? What type of illuminant is it? What shape does the light hit the ground at? Um, so what type of uh, spread function is there? All of this information, what's the angle orientation of the actual street light? All of this information is being reported and actually displayed live. And you get these kind of visualizations, which are just amazing. Mm -hmm. But in the words of uh, Steve Jobs, uh, just one more thing. So let's uh, take a look. So we've had a look at these assets, right? We've, we've done all of this about great visualizations. But Nick talked about this whole IoT thing, about connected assets. And, and really, that's not something I've, I've shown you yet. So let's take a look at how we would do that. If we look around the room, there's a couple of lights on either side that don't appear to be working. So let's see if we can address that. Let's see if we can jump into the Hilton. And I'll, uh, I'll turn on lights here so we can have a look at what's going on. We've got a couple of lights in there, coincidentally. Let's click on one of them. Have a look. Yeah, that looks like the right type of light to me. I can have a look at the breakdown. I can now have a look at the fact that which room it's in, maybe a bit of angle, et cetera. Down here, we have access to the sensor. So there's some sensor control in here. And what I want to do, it looks like the power's turned off on it, actually. So I'm just going to fix that. I'll save that away. And as if by magic, it comes on. Down here, we've got a sensor. And we can have a look at the light right now as it is out there in front of their offices. And the light. Guys, did you leave the, the light on? Oh. Let's see if we can fix that. Shouldn't be leaving lights on at this time of day. So we're going to turn that off, save it, and keep your eye on the, on the webcam. Within a few seconds, that will turn off. Well, there is, I'm, what I'm most excited about, now that the presentation is done, is that this is just the beginning. It really is just the beginning. I mean, what I've shown you here is just kind of a glimpse as to all of the possibilities. We've still got loads of ideas that we want to explore. So we really do feel that the future is all about connected asset management. And that future is Alloy. Thanks very much, guys.